This morning we're on a mission to teach you about Zambia. Find out what it's all about. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Haberdashery Gentlemen's Clothiers in the Blackwater Market in historic downtown Conway. We're focused on a recent mission trip to Zambia and we're visiting with the mission leader, J.J. Iguli. Good morning, Good J.J. Morning. How are you? I was just stunned for a second thinking where we are and this is so far from Zambia. That's true. Downtown Conway and we're just worlds apart. We are. Very, very different lifestyle, very, very different world right here compared to Zambia. Yeah, we're in this beautiful men's uh, cl clothing store, and you think about this whole Blackwater market. Have you walked through here? One time. I'm, yeah. I'm impressed. I'm, it's it very is. nice. It is yeah. stunning. Either if you come off of Laurel Street or you come off of 4th and see the Herdashery up front there on Laurel, or, of course, the Ultimate California Pizza mm -hmm. right there. I mean, excuse me, the Ultimate California Pizza off of Laurel or the Herdashery and the other Sassy Girl up there on 4th Avenue. It is a, it's a gorgeous facility, but I, it just struck me for a second. This is with these photos you brought along, and I'm so thankful that you brought along these photos to really give viewers a sense of what Zambia is like. It's a powerful piece. It is. It's, it's, it's a whole different world, like you yeah. said, a whole different yeah. world. Real quick about yourself, JJ. Are you originally from the area? No, I'm from Pennsylvania and uh, went to school in the state of Indiana, met my wife. We got married, lived in Chicago for a few years, oh, and, and then we both lived in Africa and Zambia for for a year together, and then following that is when we moved to the area and started going to a Carolina Forest Community Church and living right. in Carolina Forest Community. Yes, and Carolina Forest Community Church is the host church for the uh, for the recent. This is the third uh, trip in a row that you've taken That's correct. church members and others uh, to Zambia. That's correct. Mm. Third year in a row. That's tremendous. You know, you think about that. Yesterday morning we had a guest from. Pennsylvania, and he and his wife both met there and then moved out to California. And of course, you met your bride. Did you all meet in, in college or in? In college. Right. And we actually met going on a, a one month missions trip with our college to Africa. Is not, that right? Yes, not to Zambia. Not to Zambia, but we met and, uh, and became friends at that point and then later on started dating. And uh, actually, while we were engaged, my wife went to Zambia where this trip currently is in 99, and she right. lived there for a year by herself. Mm. which was a big deal. During your engagement? Exactly. Get, exactly. That'd be nuts. And then, then she came back and we got married and then a few year, years later she and I both went together. And you went over together from 02 to 03. That's correct. Right, right. That's a powerful thing. Uh, a, you know, being distanced from your, bra from your spouse to be uh, for the course of a year and then B, going over there and being there together. Mm -hmm. Again, another world almost apart. Definitely. Uh, Yes. Boy, JJ, that must have been tough on your family having you all away. Did your family come over and visit much while, or either of y'all's families? My wife's family did. My wife's parents came, mm -hmm. and her sister, her sister's husband came together. Uh, my parents didn't come; they weren't able to come. But my father, in one of these trips that we've gone on through the church, actually came with me. Is that right? And my mother has plans to go in the future, so it is a family affair now. Yeah. It must be interesting for your dad, of course, seeing his son in action. You know, where you're the leader of a group, mm -hmm. and of course, it's all old hat, essentially. I mean, something uh, you know, uh, that must be an interesting experience for a parent who's passed along so much to a child than to see their child in action as a pro, essentially, in another in another world. I, I, he's definitely he, he's enjoyed it because he talks about it. This was in 2005, I believe, is when he right. went. Two years later, he's still talking about it, talking about going back and talking about what we did and what, what he was able to see through me. And, and so, yes, I think it's something that, that impacted him a lot. Right, right. What do you think it is uh, uh, about Zambia that give you and your wife, Jenny, that drive to really make a difference for this country, JJ? Really, it boils down to the people. When you go there, and, it, and I don't think it's just Zambia. I think a lot of Africa is this way, but there is a very unconditional acceptance of of guests of of visitors and to the point where when they invite you into their homes it's not just a, a let's hang out for a few hours it's you're now my friend and mm -hmm. they treat you that way they'll give you anything you need and it's amazing when you see how poor they are yet they're giving so much mm. you know it just it, it boggles the mind and you want to just be able to give back you want to be able to 
to spend more time with them, to be able to develop that friendship and to be able to, to help them continue to grow and, and prosper and, mm -hmm. and, and move up, if you will, mm -hmm. in society. You know, one of these amazing facts that you that were recently shared, I think from last month, that 87 percent of Zambians survive on less than two dollars a day, JJ. I mean, they're trying to get that in someone's mind in the U.S. or anywhere when we think of poverty, but 87 percent of an entire country there is surviving on less than two dollars a day. I can't really fathom yeah. that. No, I don't. Even having been there and lived there, sometimes I can't fathom that. Oh. And I think that's one of the big reasons that we take this trip. You know, my wife and I actually toyed with the idea of being full-time missionaries, mm -hmm. but we felt that we'd have a greater impact if we actually came back and lived in the states and organized these type of mm -hmm. trips. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, America, we have we have so much, we have an abundance, and it's a good thing. We're mm -hmm. we're very blessed, but often we don't understand that two dollars a day mm. can change someone's life, change their family's life. So to take these trips, to take people there, to the, for have them to see that. Right. To uh, to be able to come back and explain it to others, and you know, even someone who gives five, ten bucks, right, can right. really dramatically change a family. It's amazing. That is amazing. That is amazing. Let's talk about some of these photos that you've brought along. Of course, we've been wanting to get you in for a while. Someone had talked about De Deanne Johnson said, just get JJ in, what he can share, the experiences there, and of course, you and Jenny both, the opportunities either of y'all, I'm sure, can express that in so many ways. But these photos really help. Mm -hmm sell the story. You've got a shot here of the orphanage. Yes, this shot is of the orphanage being constructed and it's amazing again when you compare the states to to Zambia. This orphanage started being constructed in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's 2007 and it's still not done. You see mm. the foundation is right. done. Since then I've heard, since our trip, I've heard they've added a, a few layers to the walls, but right. it's a slow moving process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This this place, this Blackwater place, I'm sure was was gutted and redone in, in right. six months, maybe. But over there, it takes three, four, five years. So it's an unbelievable, unbelievably slow process. But they're still, they're just focused. They're dedicated to getting that built so they can help orphans. Right. And of course, it, does it take that long because the uh, the the utensil, the materials aren't there because they're constantly raising funds? along the way. That's the main reason. Mm -hmm. it, it, they have to raise along the way. There is the weather that is a factor. For about four to six months out of the year it rains. It's a rainy season and the rest mm -hmm. of the year is dry so they mm -hmm. can't build much during the rainy season. And it, it's just kind of a, a live one day at a time society. Right. So it does take a lot longer when you talk about the rains and the lack of money. We've got a school shot here, the one of the high school and then this later shot of the elementary school. What The, the high school here, now y'all had um, your wife had taught in the high school, and then you were at the girls' school when you were over there full time, or when y'all were there together full time. Were y'all at separate schools? We were. My wife was at the elementary school, right? And okay. I was at the high school. And uh, these high school students, you know, that's that's how they dress every day. They they have a uniform that they wear every day. Mm -hmm. And you know, again, compared to the states, you know, much different. Our students have probably 10, 20, 30 outfits. Some of right. them, the right. average, and these girls have maybe this uniform and another two or three outfits mm. and mm. and they they iron it they press it in the old-fashioned way you right. know they they get up they wash them themselves mm -hmm. and but they always have to look presentable for school each day and they want to they want to mm. look presentable they often made fun of me because it's so dusty that my shoes would get dusty and I didn't know <laughs> how to how to sharpen them up and make them look nice but they did right. every day they were clean cut very nice very well dressed right. and then with the elementary school you yeah. can see the students are just they're they're full of life they yeah. love oh, yeah. you can see to, that right to here. be at school. They love to learn. They love to have visitors, and uh, they've got a lot of energy, which my wife enjoyed quite a bit. Yeah, we got three more shots, but if a viewer needs to get out of the house now or get out to work, what's the best number for someone to call? And is there a website to learn more about the mission trips to Zambia and some of the potential needs that you all have and some of the construction funding that you all want to continue to raise dollars for, uh, for for future trips? Absolutely. They are welcome to get on our church website, which is carolinaforest.org. Okay. And once you get to that website, there'll be a tab labeled commissioned and you okay. click on that and that'll lead you to all of our trips but especially Zambia and as for a telephone number you're welcome to call to call our house 903-0092 great 843 is the area code 903-0092 okay. I'd love to 
talk to you. I'd probably talk to you all night if you have the time. <laughs> That's right. And you've got so many tremendous photos in this uh, photo album book. I'm sure you've probably got lots of album books uh, year after year yes. from Jenny's first uh, year there in 99 uh, by herself and then you all together, 02 and 03. And are you seeing changes in the country every time you all go back if a year passes? Are you seeing quite a bit, quite a bit, but it is it is amazing. One of the people that went with us the first year, our pastor actually said, man, this is probably like America was a hundred years ago, mm. where when you get out in the villages, there's very little change. Mm -hmm. But when you get to a rural area, or excuse me, an urban area, some, some place that's developing, there are some drastic changes. Right. The first year we went back, I made it clear to the guys that went with us that be ready for no water, no electricity, and the house we pulled up to had a satellite dish on it. And they no. looked at me like, yeah. you're, you're a lunatic. What are right. you talking about? Yeah. You know, and since then, a um, few people have got cell phones out in the rural areas. So it's amazing. There are those changes. But then you've still got that dichotomy where right. you know, people, if they're wealthy, they have a bicycle. Mm -hmm. you know, but in the States, we have two or three cars, television, refrigerator. It's just a, it's a much slower change mm -hmm. as a whole, although there are a few specific changes right. that shock you. Yes. You know, folks will see those, see the uh, Christian Children's Fund spots on TV, for instance, and see that abject poverty and think, how can I really make a difference? And they're trying to get you in a mindset of just a dollar a day. Mm -hmm. You can make a difference. You highlight that if two dollars, if a, if a family can survive on less than two dollars a day, you really can make a difference. Somehow Absolutely. those two dollars can go a long way in supporting a family. You've been able to see that firsthand. Yes, and one of the things that, that we do is we try to take not only money, but some supplies and things. And, right. and it's funny because occasionally we'll take some old clothing, not out of date or, or worn, but something that we just won't wear anymore. And I've seen the same t-shirt three or four years later. Right, and wow. And it's, it's pressed, it's clean, it's yeah. a nice shape, but it's amazing that our hand-me-downs that we might throw away right. make such an impact. So something as small as a t-shirt or a pencil. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I've seen students you know, use a pencil down to about an inch left and mm. to give them a new pencil is like a new car on Christmas. You know, it's amazing. Mm. It's, it's, it's really unbelievable how much of an impact we can have, but we just don't know it. And if a viewer called the 843-903-0092 number, you could talk about some of that. Have you all set the day? I mean, you could talk about some of the needs mm -hmm. outside of just financial uh, donations. Yep. And I know you're, you've got a big push right now, the, the, the one that seems to be dearest to your heart, really helping to raise funds for that secondary school to make sure those, or the school to make sure there's dollars available to yes. continue to fund its construction. Yes, I, I, since I taught there, that's where my heart is. And, and there's a, that picture of, of the construction right, of the school. Right, this next shot, the yes. school construction. And again, it's a slow process, but they are trying to add more classrooms. Uh, but it, again, it's just, you can be overwhelmed with the need. They need finances to, to construct that, that classroom to add more students. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing because their, their showers don't work. Mm -hmm. Girls have to go to the river or to uh, a water tap just to draw water for a bath. They mm -hmm. don't have textbooks. That's another need we'd like to meet. We'd like to give them textbooks. You know? mm -hmm. So there are a variety of needs. And we have met quite a few. I don't want to meet, make it sound dire. We right. uh, A gentleman in our church that owns a soccer locker donated soccer uniforms right. with the school's logo on the front, their, their insignia. And they're the only school out of 30 schools in their part of the country that have their own uniform. Is they, that right? It was amazing to and see that's how... that's coming out of this area. That's yeah. tremendous. So anything, anything, you know, any need right. we can meet, we try to. And a, the school, like I said, is where my heart is, but it goes beyond to the hospital, to the orphanage, mm -hmm. to some of the other areas around there. 